right. Okay, here we go. So welcome this evening to um, week one, live session two, DES 109 Graphic Design 1. It is the 11th of December, 6.30 at night, mountain time. Um, and I keep looking over at my date because I can never remember. <clears throat> and uh, we're going to be doing um, a little bit of a review, excuse me, review from what we talked about yesterday, very brief. And if you want to go more in depth, you just watch the, the lecture from last night. And then we're going to uh, go over a little bit of the design principles and do uh, a little demo of the assignment and uh, briefly go over the assessment. So here we go. Oh, come on, stop it, there we go. Okay, so just to get started here, like I said, quick review, talk a little bit about <clears throat> graphic design and being a graphic designer. We'll do our demo and then go over uh, the assessment real briefly. It, um, it's not a project this week, it's actually a quiz. So I won't be going too, too in depth. Uh, just uh, the pretty much essentially the um, suggestions I have or recommendations I have for you on that is to just make sure that you're watching the pre-recorded lecture and doing your readings and you will be all set to go. So uh, to go over again, like I said briefly from what we did yesterday, going over how to be successful in this class. Successful students in this class, make sure they watch the pre-recorded lectures uh, before they do any of the assignments and take notes because all that stuff is really the uh, the bread and butter or the meat and potatoes of of everything that is going to be discussed in the lectures and in the assignments watch the live sessions either by coming in like we have jalisha today uh, again or um just watching the recording if you can't come into the live sessions and again doing that before you start your work because that will potentially answer questions that you have before you get going um, and in addition to that, I actually might provide some helpful hints before you actually get going. So you might struggle with an individual component of the project. And then once you watch the live session, realize, oh man, she showed me how to do that and it took three seconds. So it, it is especially helpful to make sure that you do that. Check over the week's work before you get started because that'll allow you to pace yourself, especially since I know a lot of you students have jobs. Maybe some of you are taking multiple courses. So this will actually help you prioritize, kind of figure out how much time you need to do X, Y, and Z and kind of schedule it throughout the week. Um, I know readings and creating an assignment is going to be slightly different when you're trying to figure out how long it's going to take you. but excuse me, the, uh, the live sessions, the pre-recorded lectures, and the lynda.com tutorials or any other videos that might be required to watch, they all have the times listed right on the, the, right on the links there, or um, right you know, on the, those pages. So you can actually total them all up, figure out, okay, I have 47 minutes that I have to watch all of these videos. Boom, I know that I have you know, 60 minutes that I have between this class and this class, or in the morning before I go to work, or whatever you have to do. So just going over the week's work before you get started can, can really uh, help you in terms of planning. Check the announcements. I know that this says five times a week. I'm just suggesting you check it probably every other day. Um, Monday, Wednesday, Friday. Yeah, that's like between three and four days a week. Uh, it simply because that is where I am going to be mainly communicating with you guys, providing helpful tips, providing tutorials, links. If there's ever an issue with the live session here, that's where I'll put the information out so that um, you don't waste your time coming to the Zoom room and then find out I'm not here. Uh, in addition to that, I actually posted an announcement this week as a reminder of the odd schedule that we have during this mod because of winter break. So things like that are going to be very important. You guys might end up submitting assignments that you didn't necessarily need to submit or or maybe you'll be a little bit late or early or whatever. So just make sure that you check those assignments. Do the daily checkpoints. Those are those short videos that are 
under about five minutes long and they have a couple of really quick questions right afterwards. Like I mentioned yesterday, there are a certain number of points that you need to make sure that you hit for your grade and anything above that is extra credit. <clears throat> Excuse me. Fully participate in the discussions. It's only day two here and I've seen a lot of really great participation already, which is awesome. The uh, last mod, the first week was also really good, but I've actually even seen some subject matter already included in this week's discussion that was not mentioned in the previous mod. So I've been able to jump in on a couple of different things that you guys have talked about and I noticed that other people have already done responses, which is amazing. Keep up with that and we'll all really be able to get um, a lot of a lot of information out of these discussions, which is essentially what this is all about. Uh, read the background information and submission instructions for your assignments carefully and your assessments. Like I mentioned yesterday, I cannot tell you the amount of assignments and assessments I get in the wrong format, and then it needs to be resubmitted and you essentially waste your resubmission. You get one try to resubmit it, and if after the second try, which unfortunately I've seen, you still are not submitting the correct file type, unfortunately I can't grade it, so or you, uh, you end up with a zero, and I don't want to have to do that. Um, same thing with the, you know, the file type naming. There are rubrics right at the end of the assessments and the assignments that tell you exactly what you need to do. So you can just boom, 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 just check them off and you'll be, you'll be good to go. Number eight, watch the demos and the examples in class because I'm going to be going over specifics and uh, showing you little helpful tips, showing you some links that'll help you guys out, uh, the other, other resources. Submit your work on time. That's kind of self-explanatory, but who wants to get points deducted from what could have otherwise been a, you know, an absolutely perfect assignment simply because it got submitted late? Contact the instructor, which is me, if you have questions or run into problems or delays. I did mention this yesterday about the late policy. If there is a problem, you know, especially, you know, um, what one might consider extenuating circumstances, please let me know and I will try to work with you, see if we can figure something out. But if I am contacted after the assignments do, um, you know, then it's it's just, it's a late, a late assignment. And I, I obviously, like I said, wanna make sure that I can try to work with you guys. Number 11, utilize the multi-sessions, class coach and student success center for help and feedback. Multi-sessions are Thursday afternoons, 12.30 to 2.30 uh, Mountain Time. The class coach, I actually put out a message today to try to find out who our coach was, and once I get that answer, I will be putting up an announcement with her or his flyer with their hours on it. And the Student Success Center is also there for help. Um, I believe I put up... I don't know if it was today, if it was scheduled for tomorrow, an announcement on the Student Success Center and how to access that. So if it's not up there today, it should be there tomorrow. And number 12, again, just starting the week's work early and pacing yourselves. And especially for those of you that uh, have jobs, have kids, have multiple classes, you want to make sure that you're not killing yourselves. So you want to make sure that you are really Pacing yourself, you're you know, uh, setting aside time, taking breaks when you need to, and that may require the entire week to do that. So um, I don't want you guys getting burned out because this, you know, you're, they, it can absolutely happen in a job like this. Um, so required lectures, we have the pre-recorded session, which is we have one for each week, so they're um, the two hours long. Watch before you watch, start your assignments, take notes. The, the fact that it is already recorded, you can break it up if you need to, watch a half an hour here, 20 minutes there, you know, until it's all completed. Sometimes it, two hours can be tough, which is why I like to break up these sessions to one hour each, uh, which is also on this slide here. You can see at the bottom, live sessions, two each, uh, excuse me, two each week, one hour each, because I want to break it up for you guys. And the Mondays, we'll do the overview of the week some tips, and then starting this coming week, we will do critiques of people's submissions. And Tuesday, like today, we'll be doing assignment details and demonstrations. So, I'm just gonna 
take a sip real quick. Excuse me. What is graphic design? Uh, the graphic design is the art or skill of combining text and pictures for use in any visual medium for advertising, magazines, logos, etc. So it is in uh, lots of different things. Again, this kind of reiterates the pre-recorded lecture talking about how it is a method of communication, usually using typography and imagery. So you can see in the images on the side here, we have a big billboard, which could have been in print. It looks like this one happens to be digital, but it is you know, imagery. We have typography. I am guessing that this cat did not actually eat some donuts, so obviously they're superimposed on top of it. We have some logo design here, uh, what is a very common um, icon for a, a search bar. So, you know, user interface design kind of thing. And we have some packaging design down here, all cleverly put together. This obviously looks like it was, it was meant to indicate, you know, the, the honey dripping down the side of the packaging. So that's really clever. I actually think it's a die cut um, sticker as well. So you can see that the, the sticker or, or paper packaging, however it is, is actually kind of cut out there so that you can see the color of the bottle, which that's really actually very clever. So we have, like I said, we have logos and branding, magazines, newspapers, print advertisements, like this one could have been, except that it is obviously digital, billboards, posters, website graphics, signs, product packaging. It is absolutely everywhere. Uh, from road signs to technical schematics, inter-office memos, reference manuals, graphic design enhances the transfer of knowledge and visual messages. It makes it stronger. It makes it more readable. The um, Just like me not talking for two hours straight is um, really it's beneficial, typically, because I won't get monotonous. It's kind of the same thing with graphic design. The imagery is going to break it up. We're using the design principles with the typography, it breaks up the image so it makes it easier on the eyes, easier on your, your brain, really, because you're trying to take everything all in. So readability and legibility is enhanced by improving the visual presentation and the layout of the text. So again, you can see, find it in education, in the textbooks, Websites and web design, anything that you are going to be looking at, whether it's the Zoom classroom or Canvas, you know, you're going you're gonna to see things laid out in a particular manner that hopefully is easy on the eyes. Entertainment, we got People Magazine right here with one of my favorites. I love him. Um, and uh, for those of you that don't know, that's Hugh Jackman. And uh, publications, such as, like I said, books, magazines, etc. cetera. Um, so take a minute. For those that are just watching, think about where else you might have seen graphic design. Jalisha, can you think of anything in particular that maybe hasn't been mentioned that you might have seen graphic design in use? Uh, no, I mean, everything really has pretty much been mentioned. Um, I, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> so much stuff, like... It it's tricky, and when you get out there, you realize how much is out there because you'll, you'll be you'll be looking around. I mean, it's not necessarily graphic design, but it is kind of design license plates. It's a pretty basic template, but it's hello designs. Yep, hello. yep. Someone has to put them together. You have you know like a Georgia license plate has you know the the orangish background kind of behind it. I know here in Massachusetts we have lots of different types of license plates for teachers and Cape Cod, and they have little icons next to them. Um, so um, yeah, the army has so much. Like my sister's in the military; she's in the army. My baby sister, and there's so much graphic stuff that they be looking at. I'd be like, what in the world? It's like when they go to certain training, it'd be so cool. Like, oh yeah, you're gonna have you're gonna have instruction manuals and manifests and that kind of thing. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. And because it's a government issued kind of thing, you're gonna see a lot of branding with that most likely as well. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. yep, that's great. That's great. So now we start to hit some of the software programs of Adobe Photoshop. Uh, is mainly for graphics and photo editing, and it's one of the many 
programs in Adobe Creative Suite, that big name that everyone knows. It is pixel-based uh, for raster images, excuse me, which allows you to create and edit the original graphics. The pixels, uh, excuse me, pixel-based raster images are a little bit harder to edit than vector. You have to edit them differently, and they are restricted in size because of the resolution. They are made up of a certain number of squares of information, which are called the pixels, and the, you know, the larger you get an image, the, that number of pixels does not change, which is why when you zoom in on an image, it will eventually get, start to look blurry, unless it is a very, very high resolution image. Illustrator, on the other hand, is vector-based, and a vector-based graphic is, there is a mathematical component to it where it uses an algorithm to size, consistently size your graphic. So you can size it exponentially. You could, you know, it could be one inch by one inch. It could be 30 feet by 30 feet, and it will not lose any quality. So as you can see on the left-hand side that this is a raster image. And actually, let me just confirm that. Jalisha, can you see this right here? Is my screen shared here? Yes, ma'am, I okay. can see you. <laughs> Just wanted to make sure. Yeah, um, I can see you, I can hear you and see everything that you're doing. <laughs> right. So we have on the left-hand side here, we have the vector graphics with all the pixels. As you can, you can see, it kind of gets blurrier right around the edges. And then on the right-hand side, that is a vector graphic, which essentially when I bring it into PowerPoint, it becomes a, a raster image. But because of the, um, the quality that the vector image is initially, it obviously looks much sharper than the raster. I'm um, just making sure that I got everything here. Yes, okay, there we go. Now you actually can as well, you know what, let me back up a moment. You actually can in Illustrator go back and create raster images and you can work with vector images in Photoshop, but that's a whole other um, different part of a, <laughs> another course. Uh, you can work with smart objects in Photoshop and you can edit them that way. Uh, Adobe InDesign is a desktop publishing application in Adobe CS or uh, Adobe CC these days, um, used mainly for laying out typography and images together. So newsletters, posters, brochures, some people that have been in the industry for a while probably remember also using Quark, Quark Express. Adobe InDesign has greatly surpassed Quark Express. And some of you probably don't even, have never even heard that name before, and that's okay. Uh, but you can bring in images, uh, both vector and raster, into InDesign, and you can't manipulate them the same way. However, um, you, can, you can still bring them in and utilize them that way. In order to modify those images, most of the time you have to modify them in the original, the native program. And then you essentially end up linking those images within InDesign. So they're not embedded into the InDesign file unless you specifically tell it to, which then increases the file. So basic principles of design. This is included in the pre-recorded lecture. We have contrast, repetition, alignment, and proximity. And the acronym here, C-R-A-P, yes, you are reading that correctly. I like to think that if you don't use those basic, L, uh, excuse me, and actually, that's, that's actually, this is actually tricky. I should reword that. It's not basic elements. It's the basic principles of design. Um, so I actually should change that because I don't want you guys getting confused. So the way I look at it is if you don't use the basic principles of design, which is also known as crap then that's what you're going to get. And it's a very easy way to remember that. Contrast, the first letter in the acronym C means, uh, essentially means to change. You have a change in size, color, direction, typeface, weight. It brings emphasis and it creates focal points, which it draws your eye to. And also kind of creates interesting kind of uh, layouts and features in your work. 
So we have, uh, just in this example, there's essentially four, actually this one is not four, but every, every, other, um, every other category here, we have four images with one of them slightly different, so it's contrasting visually, to draw your eye in, to create interest, to create a different look with the rest of the, the layout. Repetition makes a cohesive look. It kind of uh, has everything fluid within the design. It represents consistency. So you repeat these elements so that, the like, this, like I said, the design is cohesive. It feels like it all goes together, like something would be missing if you didn't have one of those pieces. Typeface, size, color, letting, etc. they're all used to create visual unity and harmony without the design to make it, again, look like if you didn't have one of those pieces, something would be missing. So for example, in this particular image, we have, actually, you know what, Jalisa, why don't you, um, why don't you give me an example of repetition in this? We have what looks like probably the front of a catalog and then the inside pages. Why don't you give me a, a, an example of repetition here? Um, well, you can kind of see like the, the color in the lines. They continue in the, on the outside, you can see that they continue with the color in the line, the um, alignment in the inside of the brochure, like the green and the blue, you know, all that. And yeah. Right, you're exactly right. You have the color scheme that kind of is carried over from the front into the inside with the, the, the light gray, excuse me, the light gray, the light green, the yellow, also these kind of diagonal shapes, these, um, I don't know if you call them trapezoids maybe, that kind of go through the, the background here as well, kind of breaks it up, makes it look very interesting. You also have the, the repetitive block of type right here where this one is outlined or not outlined but it's kind of blocked in by these two thick lines that that's also actually carried through in onto the the inside pages as well obviously we would need to change the white lines to black in order to be able to to see that um, but we have the, the same typeface that comes in here as well and you know these almost serve as headlines or depending on what the, the information is left in the, the copy here, maybe these are, are simply emphasis points as to what message they're trying to get across. Uh, so the principles of design, alignment is another one. That's the, so we have C, we've done R, we've, and this is A. Uh, alignment is vitally important in graphic design. It allows you to balance your image and creates a connection between um, related elements, which is very, very important, especially when you are reading something, because if your eye can't focus, then the message isn't going to be getting across. We have horizontal and vertical, al vertical alignment are two different examples. We also have a couple of other different examples here. We have this is the, the, the edge, it's aligned along the edge. Center alignment, you also probably will see left and right alignment or left and right justification. You probably see in you know, things like Microsoft Word. Center alignment, you also see in Microsoft Word. This is actually a great example where right here on the left-hand side, this is technically properly left aligned, but because of the um, elaborate here, little decorative swoosh in the V, it almost looks like there's something missing right here. So this individual designer actually pushed things over a little bit to make it look like it's more aligned. So sometimes you actually have to do that because the, your software is, is aligning it as it's supposed to be. However, it still kind of looks funky to the eye, and you know that's a technical term, funky. Um, but you know, every once in a while, you're going to have to do that, especially with script fonts. They can definitely um, cause problems. And then we have right here this aligned or misaligned text. 
I believe, let me see if we were to put it up one, one, two, three, four, yep, one, two, three. If we would put it up one line, it would be completely center aligned, but it's not, it's off by just one line. So it kind of makes your eyes zoom right into it because it looks a little different, which is also, again, an example of contrast as well. So then the last principle is proximity, and proximity is the principle that utilizes space. It groups items together so that it looks like a group as opposed to several unrelated items, and you typically put related items together. So we have Joe's graphics, which obviously the, um, the information along the outside is going to be related to Joe's graphics because this individual topic this particular item is a business card it's all going to be related to Joe's graphics however on the right hand side here we have the address together and then we have the phone number and the website together so we have the location as one group and the contact information as another group you could potentially put it all together as well and that still would probably look more visually appealing than breaking things up like this but this kind of makes sense. And even though we have this empty space right here, it still kind of looks balanced. We have the, the contrasting larger business name right here. Um, so that's a, that's a good use of, use of proximity right here and um, also of alignment to the right-hand side. So then again, we have another, just a different example of proximity where you have related images despite the fact that this image doesn't go on to the the second one these are obviously views of the ocean we have an inset image right here that is most likely the interior of this particular image and we can tell that these smaller images go with the one that's next to it because it is it is close to that image this large uh, excuse me smaller image is close to this larger image and very often you'll find in magazines you maybe would see a um, maybe another set of text we have essentially two bodies of text right here one and two for easy readability and then sometimes like I said in a magazine you might see maybe even a third one that's a little bit longer to maybe cover the entire picture and a little bit you know, not so tall as these other ones. And typically that would indicate that that is a caption for the picture. And you would know that because of its proximity to the picture. Okay, so Jalisha, could you find any of the principles of design for me? You know, and actually, let me, let me actually even narrow that down. Uh, could you find an example of contrast in this poster here? Yeah, the color. <laughs> yeah, we have a good contrast of color. The bright orange and the bright yellow against the black kind of mm -hmm. creates a stark look to it. With the stars and it, it kind of brings everything together. But your eye usually, your eye pretty much, well, my eye, my, the first thing I really look at is the light that comes down. <laughs> yeah. So, Yep, and actually this whole layout um, is really a great example of proximity. So we're going to actually skip over repetition and alignment real quick because it has this one, this one element, this icon, which is actually center aligned along with the text right here. But it's kind of, it's nicely spaced. So it's, it's kind of right in the center, but it's not too close to the to the text here it's not too close to the borders on on either side um, so there's a, you know there's a decent amount of of room and in addition to that we have these stars that don't feel cramped they're not in any kind of pattern so it's not that we would maybe expect a star to be right here but if this star wasn't here it would feel like something was missing yeah. So they're they're placed, they're arranged in a fairly logical manner. Yeah. Uh, that's also another example of repetition. And maybe the repetition of the the text here. This this typeface is kind of repeated throughout, but they use contrasting sizes and weights. And actually, I already mentioned alignment. So there we go. We got C R A P right there. 
<laughs> so, oh, there we go. Okay, so now here is my secret question of the day. We have, that's me, obviously, and this is my animal. So the secret question of the day is, what breed of dog do I have? Any, uh, any thoughts, Jalisha? Um, no. <laughs> <laughs> I would say a poodle by the hair, but... Uh, very good. <laughs> oh, yay, I got it. <laughs> I'm very impressed. He's my poodle. He, that's Chewy, Chewbacca, Millennium Falcon, Kinney. My kids named the middle name. Actually, you know, it might have actually have even been my husband. Um, but he's my standard poodle. He's about 45, 50 pounds. He's hanging out with me tonight while I'm, while I'm teaching. And he's, um, he's a love. He's, he's almost... If he's two and a half, I guess now, but he's, he's a lot of fun. He's adorable. So now we have demo time. Let's go over our assignments. Okay. And, uh, oh, you know what? Actually, you know what? Let's even go back one. We're going to go, whoops. I didn't mean to click that. Well, I should go over the discussion very, very quickly because I do want to go over the demo first. So in our discussion, um, we're talking about design history and how the past can repeat itself and how we can utilize um, our experiences and the and information on the past to provide inspiration for us. So our prompt is that we have been, excuse me, we have been hired by a band to produce a series of posters pro promoting their upcoming concert tour and their music is inspired by 1960s punk. So there, here is your, your prompt for your questions to kind of give you some ideas. As you begin thinking about possible poster ideas, where might you look for inspiration? Why would you look in those places? How might the past influence what we have going on right now with text styles, colors, etc. How might we put a fresh contemporary twist on the posters and why is that important? And then how would we explain our choices and our research to our client? That's a very important thing in the industry, especially when you and you will at some point come to a disagreement with an employer or a client as to why you designed something the way that you did it. They might not especially agree with your thinking or maybe they simply don't understand the way that you were thinking and once you've explained it to them, it makes more sense to them. So that's gonna be a very important thing for you folks to remember once you get into the industry. So these are our first discussion. Your substantive post, substantive post is due Wednesday night with 150 words or more with a citation or reference, and then the two follow-up posts. And like I said, we have some people that are doing wonderful already, which is great. Um, feel free to include, oh, we have it. We do have an image. I haven't read this one yet, um, but we have someone that included an image right there. So feel free to include other resources, imagery, um, I, I actually think those tend to make the discussions a little bit more interesting. Um, just as long as you reference them so I know where they come from, it's, you know, that's, it's all good. Uh, so we have, uh, okay, we're going to go to the assignment now and get going with that. And actually, I will probably, let me actually change my, my share as I do this. I love the background. <laughs> Thank you. That's part of my logo. All right. And main screen. There we go. Okay. Can you see Canvas there now? Yes. Okay. Because <laughs> I'm, I'm going to have to go into InDesign in a minute, and that's where my I have two monitors going. So for our assignment this week, we are going to be going through history. So once you've gotten to the, the assignment page, okay, we're going to be, uh, like I said, looking into history for inspiration. History can provide visual inspiration to your own creative process. And history can be 40 years ago. It could have been three years ago. It really doesn't matter. Um, so it, your, your own history, it, it, 
that can have multiple definitions. History can provide conceptual inspiration to your own design process, and it can help you learn from the common visual language of design. It can also, and this doesn't say it here, this is just my own two cents, it can also actually help you learn what not to do. Um, and I have a, a fun little post that I'll put up, uh, maybe I'll actually do it early this mod. I had put it up in the, the last week last mod but maybe i'll actually put it up this week um, of some design fails <laughs> so it can it can actually help you realize what things that you maybe should stay away from so for this assignment we are creating a set of double-sided flashcards for three different errors from history you start out by downloading this word document and when you open it, it has, there we go, a list of different graphic design errors. You're going to pick three of these, however, whichever one you are most interested in, if you want to take a look and see some of the styles and see what speaks to you the most, I always find that it's easier to research something that I actually want to find out about. So you're going to pick three. We have a couple of resources here, just as a, um, a starting point, you absolutely are more than welcome and encouraged to look elsewhere. In addition to these, you might find more information or better information by using, utilizing other resources. Uh, so we're gonna go, let's start with, we're gonna start with heroic realism today. And I am going to just use one of these links just as an example. So this particular link, let's scroll all the way up, has a very brief explanation of a variety of different styles. Like I said, you are more than welcome and encouraged to look elsewhere as well. I'm going to jump down to heroic realism. And it talks about using art and graphic design as propaganda. And th there is a particular time period associated with it. And it gives a list of the main characteristics. We have realistic imagery. Usually just features one person. Typically has a strong message. Uh, very often, although not always, uh, a sort of political message as well. And the imagery is typically fairly realistic. Not necessarily photographs, but sometimes. Uh, and so what we're going to do Excuse me, my goodness, I'm having a hard time today. Once we have kind of gotten an idea of the error that we want to look into, we're going to get started. So each double-sided flashcard needs to contain these elements, and I'm going to copy this. And I, just for myself, I am going to paste it into this document because this is how I, I work when I'm designing. I make sure that I have everything. I'm going to end up putting this in my InDesign file just as is. So we need the name of the era, a typical time frame, a picture of the design piece. And there, I mean, if you Google heroic, real, real, excuse me, my God, heroic realism in graphic design, you're going to come up with a lot. I mean, in pretty much any of these, you're going to come up with a lot. So don't feel that you have to just use those, you know, three or four that were, that were on that link. I would love to see some different ones because I essentially I love learning about all this stuff. So um, the, you you never you never stop being a student even when you're a teacher. So uh, so we're going to do like I said, we're going to do the picture, a title of the design piece a, um, or excuse me, title of the design piece, if you can find it, the artist, or the designer, and then a min minimum of 50 words talking about the key traits of that era. And then lastly, a contemporary design application for that style, not that image, but that style. Um, give me what you might, what you think that this might be used for today. And then on the back, you'll use uh, you'll create a color scheme and the citations. Again, that's on the back. So at the color scheme, you're going to create some kind of color palette. And then you'll save it, the, the file right here, 
DES 109 underscore assignment one underscore and then your name and export the file as a PDF. I cannot view InDesign files, so it needs to be a PDF. And these are just some examples. I'm gonna give you one example here. This individual laid them out landscape. Uh, and actually I do believe the, where is it? Here it is, I complete, I'm, I apologize, I skipped over this. So it, it, it's a five by seven card. I, I skipped over this one little section here. So we're going to have six pages total. So you're gonna have a front and a back, and the flashcards need to be five by seven. And it doesn't matter if you wanna do them portrait or landscape, so if you wanna have it long way this way, that's fine. If you wanna do it this way, that is also fine. However you feel is the best way to um, put through your message. So we have on this individual, we have the image on the right-hand side, and they've broken everything down essentially into categories. We have the name, the date, the title and the, the, creator, the creator, goodness, a little bit of information about the key characteristics of the style and then what they thought might be a good use for it. And then this person has the color palette that they chose for this. They did not include their references here, any citations, which is something I'm gonna actually have to mention to uh, the Dean. Uh, because we want to make sure that these benchmarks have exactly what you guys are going to need in there. But you can place the, the reference anywhere it seems appropriate and is legible. Okay, so you can choose fonts that are appropriate. See, here we go. We got another one. And actually, I think they use pretty much the same font for both of these. Yep, they did. And that's okay. And then we have some, a very interesting color scheme back here as well. And this, they decided to make this one portrait as opposed to landscape, and that's fine. And then we have a very, very simple, clean looking palette here. Okay, and these, these palettes are based on the images right here, that they are the, the sample image that they are choosing. So what we're going to do is, we're gonna pull up InDesign, and mine might look slightly different from yours. This is uh, 2019, but I obviously do a lot of my own work as well, so I have lots of things in here. So we open up InDesign, we're going to create a new document, and now the, the assignment is five by seven inches. So especially when you are starting this new document, make sure that it says inches, not picas, not points, not feet, not pixels. Uh, it can get tricky. Um, I am going to start off, I think I'm gonna make it, I think I'm gonna do it horizontal. Industry standard is width times uh, length. So usually the first number is the width and then the second number is the height. And I am going to use facing pages so that Actually, there we go. Uh, facing pages so that both the front and the back are going to be right next to each other. If you don't do that, that's not a problem. That I'm not going to take anything off for that. Now, if you notice, we oh yeah, only have one page there. If I go to pages, there we go. So actually, yeah, it's not. There we go. There we go. I got my facing pages. I've, I'm going to have to go back here for one second because I'm trying to remember how I had done this before. Why all master pages, I'm so sorry. Ah, la 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 la. Because I looked this up earlier today and now I'm completely forgetting. Because um, we have this, whoop. Oh, I thought someone came in. I guess not. Let me try here. Facing pages, nope, oh, here we go, yes, I'm sorry. Okay, so we have in the document setup, this is actually under oh, pages, I believe. Uh, control, P. yes. Uh, so control, alt, P actually brings up the document setup here, um, and that's probably, oh, I'd have to figure it, because that's on a PC, and I'll have to look that up for the, the Mac. Right here, we have it starting on page one. If I start it on page two, it's actually gonna skip over this, this master page right here. 
and now I've got the facing pages right there. I can get rid of that guy. So now I have my facing pages. <laughs> Again, if you don't do that, I'm not taking points off because that's not a requirement. Um, so now I am going to look up. I said I was going to do heroic realism. I am going to pick something different, I think. I don't want to do socialist. Let's see. <laughs> this is kind of funny. That's not, that's obviously, um, <laughs> that's obviously heroic realism inspired, but it's not actually from the era. Um, let's go. You know what? I actually used this in my discussion, so we'll use this one. And while I'm doing that, I'm actually going to copy and go back in here, go my type tool, and I'm going to put my link right there for my image so I don't forget it. I'm going to put this right over here because that's my back. Just again, so I don't forget it. Oops, excuse me, wrong one. And I'm going to save my image. I'm just going to put it right on my desktop here just so I can make this easy for you guys. And I'm going to import this either by Control D or you can go up to File and Place as well. And if any of you folks need help with any of your InDesign, that is absolutely fine. Feel free to let me know. We can talk to the coaches. You guys can talk to me in the multi-session. I can absolutely uh, provide help with that. So now here we go. I've got my image in here. I've, I've um, expanded it slightly. I actually think I want to change my margins because I think that that's too, just for my own. There we go. That was just a little bit too big for me. I didn't like that. Okay, and so now I'm going to go back to my Word document where I had copy and pasted the requirements. And now I'm going to put that Im imagery, or excuse me, that information in here. Oops, excuse me. Oh, and actually just, um, just reminded me. Before you start working, and then while you are working, make sure you save all the time. Because in the design world, uh, this is not what I'm looking for, in the design world, these programs are ram hogs, and they will crash your computer whenever they feel like it. Especially when you've been working for three hours and haven't saved. And unfortunately, I have learned that the hard way. So, I copied the assignment file name requirement. I pasted it into the file name, put my name in, boom, there we go. So now, I'm going to get rid of these bullets just because I don't want them. That is a design preference. And I'm going to start out by picking a couple of different fonts. Now, this is where it starts to get fun. Um, I have a couple of favorite font sites. You can use Adobe Font if you'd like, and with the year Creative Cloud subscription, um, that I believe comes with it. And it also, I think, used to be called Adobe Type Kit. This one is actually my personal favorite, but there are other font sites out there. And the reason I like this is because it's broken into categories and a very, very large portion, probably like 98% of the fonts in here are free. So I love that. So I'm going to go with, let's see, where did I find this imagery? So we have some basic fonts, some sans serif fonts some that are they're very stable and solid looking heavier kind of look so i'm actually going to see yeah, yeah very very standard self i mean excuse me sans serif fonts we do have a script here that is to add some um some contrast to make it look a little bit interesting so, you know, I'm actually going to go back to Defont. It's Defont.com, and I'll include that in my uh, announcement. Actually, I might even make that a separate announcement. And, ooh, I actually like this one. 
lemon milk. Cocoa Goose, the bold font. See, a lot of these are actually really awesome. I should keep calm. I think I even have this. So I think, you know, I'll, rather than waste time looking for anything else, I believe I have that one. Oh, if I do, it's not installed. So let's see if I can actually find another one that might work well. Um, yeah, sure, why not? I'm gonna name of the era. And I can actually make the rest of this, that style, by copying, oh, let me see if I can do that again. There we go. There we go. You use the uh, eyedropper tool, and it actually copies the attributes. So if, um, if you decide halfway through it, like I just did, that I wanted to actually make all of those categories the same thing, it's an easy fix. And I'm going to make all those capitals because just because. Okay. So now uh, I'm just going to throw some dates on here because I don't know them off the top of my head. But I wanted to kind of show you guys how. To... What's that? I have a question. Absolutely. Go ahead. When we do our photo, um, do you want us to make sure that the photo is CMYK or you just want us to just place it in there? Doesn't matter. Okay. It, that, that doesn't matter. That's a great question because um, these aren't going to be printed. Okay. So, that, so it doesn't matter. Um, okay. Typically, if you're printing something, you do have to be concerned of that because of the, uh, the inks are set up in CMYK format most of the time. But since these are just going to be viewed on a monitor, doesn't really matter. Okay. Okay. That's all right. Um, Something I really so, and actually, I'm putting this in the wrong spot. There we go. General date. We're going to put just date. And we have heroic realism. And actually, you know what? I don't like that as all capitals. So, I'm going to fix that. It would help if I could spell to. Picture of a piece. I have the picture of the piece right here. Um, I do know that there is a specific artist attributed to this piece. I cannot remember his name off the top of my head, but I would put, you know, um, this is this is Rosie the Riveter. I know that. And we're going to just say Joe Smith, just because I know that there is one out there. Um, Oops, my goodness, I cannot type today to save my life. Oh, and artist. <laughs> Make sure you capitalize. <laughs> um, and contemporary application, also back here. Um, uh, poster for, hmm, women's rights. Um, so, in, in, you know what, um, in a presidential campaign, I'm actually going to make that a little bit more specific. You know, we have a lot of, um, a lot of women's rights issues that we can work on so what the heck that and that still applies to today so um so what i actually am going to do like i said i'm going to make that not caps i make that in title case because that's what i preferred and okay so now we have a little bit of contrast here by using capitals and title case um, I would even actually, and this, because we're running out of time, I'm not going to keep going with this particular portion. Um, I would probably also make this a little bit less bold, and I probably would also put that on different lines, just to use up the space a little bit, because there is a lot of space here. This obviously is not 50 words, but you folks will find what information you would like on your, on your flashcards. Um, and make sure that that's 50 words. Um, another thing to actually try is if you do control B, you can actually align this to the center. 
and then you will have the same amount of space on the top and bottom um, and it automatically aligns it for you right there um, we would still need to do a little bit of work here where that word gets cut off uh, and um, you know working on spacing in between the letters but that is okay so now for the back I am going to just do a couple of quick things just to kind of get an idea for the palette that I want to use. There we go. I'm going to overlap some of them so you can see how the, um, the colors would interact with each other. And I'm going to, uh, afterwards, I'm going to remove these strokes on the outside because that will, um, that will actually change the way that, oh, that's not what I wanted to do. Sorry, that was the stroke. That wasn't the, see, there we go. I, I had this flipped over here. Um, so the stroke will actually change the, the way that the swatches kind of interact with each other. And I don't, I don't want to have that happen. I want this to um, appropriately represent it. So we have, I'm going to put that in the back because there's not a lot of, not a lot of that flesh color in there. So I'm going to get rid of the strokes here, the outline. So now, oh, you know what? And I don't, now I'm going to create one more because it didn't really look like it was connecting that well. Well, move this guy down. We're going to make that black. There is a little bit of black in there. Okay, and my citation or my reference is hiding back here. I'm going to bring it out front. And I'm going to stick it right in here. Now this I would prefer to be in APA format, but whatever. Um, I don't have time to look that up right now because I'm running out of time as it is. However, this is essentially the type of thing that we are going to be doing. So we're going to be, we're going to have the two flashcards for E, or excuse me, the front and the back for each flashcard for one era each. So this is her realism. I could have then done grunge and um the victorian era and each one would kind of you know look like it belongs with the front and back hopefully would look like they belong together so we can choose any photo we want right yeah as long as it is representative of that era yep absolutely okay okay and oh, when i did i did it again did it again for the assignment i will because it's only going to take one second to do whoops wrong one like I said, the, assign, uh, the assessment, oh goodness, I can't talk, it's getting late. Um, it is... It's the quiz. <laughs> yep, it is just a quiz um, based on your readings and your uh, viewing of the pre-recorded lecture. Uh, I took this as a student right before uh, the class, which is why uh, it, you might have seen a little green over there, just to make sure that everything was all working correctly. Um, so there's, I think, 10 questions. They're pretty, pretty easy. If you've watched the information and read the, the articles. Um, so, I mean, that, that's that. You just make sure. And I, I don't believe that there's a time limit on these. So, um, and it's definitely open book. Yeah, see, there we go. Time limit, none. It's open book. So you can always go back and forth as you're doing it as well. So. Um, so I want to make sure the font, Adobe fonts, I'll go over that one later. Okay, so I think I got everything. I think I covered everything I wanted to, even though we're one minute over. Uh, Jaleesha, do you have any questions tonight for me? No, you answered the, the, the main question that I had about the, the photo being TMYK. That's what I was okay. worried about. Um, but other than that, I'll just follow the demo. Um, when I do my first one, that way I know I've done it right. <laughs> okay. So what I'm actually, I'm just going to show this also to you real quick. Um, so once you are done, I'm just making it, we're, we're pretending that these are different layouts, but I just wanted to make sure that I have one, two, three, four, five, six slides. This is what you guys will have. And you can export them right as PDF. And uh, doo -doo -doo -doo. essentially the size, I mean, the, the settings there don't really matter. Okay, and then bingo, this is what you should have for me. It's not showing up as, um, oh, wait a minute, 
come on. Ooh. Oh, I must have. Oh, see, this is uh, this is good that I did this. Because I believe I have my PDF. Yep. Okay, so you want to make sure that this says all right here. I only exported one of my six pages. So that would not be good because then I would only see one side of one flashcard for you folks. So make sure this says all, export it. And then when I open it up, I should have all of them here. So good. I'm glad that I did that. So all right then. Well, um, for those of you watching and for you, Jalisha, thank you again for coming in today. It, like I said, it's so much easier and more interesting, I think, when I can go back and forth with someone. <laughs> and um, for, uh, again, for those of you watching, um, I am here 1230 Mountain Time on Thursday for any questions or any additional help. And um, hopefully we will, we will get this course going uh, and off to a good start. All right, Miss Melissa, have a good night. You too, Jalisha, and to the rest of you watching, also have a great night. Bye.